What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this super cool kind of like a fire effect and uh, it's super easy to do. No plugins or any other special software is needed for this for the entire video, which is really cool. And then the other one here is a very simple uh, kind of uh, zooming mask transition. This one I don't think I've done a video on because it's a little bit different, but it's actually super easy. It's probably the easiest one. Uh, so I think you guys will absolutely love this video. And if you guys do like videos like this one and you wanna see more in the future, please leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a video. And uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the only thing you need for today's video is the actual fire footage. And you guys can access the video, which I'll leave down in the description. It's a YouTube video. What I'm gonna do here in this video is I wanna create kind of like a, a very simple transition to transition onto this video clip. And then from here, I wanna kind of make this shot a little more interesting. So what I wanna do first is go onto where you think you could use an item. So what I wanna do is once my playhead is right here, I'm gonna to go to the top and go to edit, and I'm gonna go down to add a freeze frame, and I'm gonna press shift Z, and I'm gonna click this clip and just drag it up, exact, just drag it directly up, and then we're gonna trim this down. Whoops, we're gonna trim this clip down a bit, and I'm gonna move it to the left just like this. And I'm gonna zoom in into the timeline and it's gonna, if I push play, it's gonna play through and I want it to start right about here. And what I wanna do is I want to mask out this kind of like jewelry piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the effects, I'm gonna go down into the masks, draw mask and drag that onto your clip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in into the window here just so I can make a better selection. I'm gonna click and drag to make a curve you're gonna notice if you wanna make a curve, but you click, it's going to just, you know, it won't let you make a curve. So if you wanna make a curve, just right click and make sure it's from linear. It's gonna look like that and make sure it's set to smooth and that will give you that smooth curve. And then you can click and drag and make those adjustments. So once you're happy with your selection, we're gonna go zoom out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the uh, playhead at the very beginning of the actual freeze frame clip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to transform and go into scale. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale this up a lot. So I'm gonna scale this up, I'm gonna go into the transform tool, and I'm gonna make sure that this is centered so we can see everything, right? We're not gonna make this completely, you know, we're not gonna zoom in all the way in here. We're just gonna make it so it covers the entire frame. So I'm gonna zoom this quite a bit, and I wanna make sure I cover all of those edges. So I'm gonna zoom up until we don't see any of the uh, background uh, footage. So I'm gonna move it. And I think around about here is good, so you can't see any of that. And so once we're there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the uh, keyframe here next to scale all, and you are gonna add one on position as well. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here, as well as position. I'm gonna go to the end of this clip here, one frame to the left so we can see what we're doing. And we're gonna type in zero for the X axis. We're gonna type zero for the Y axis and press enter. And then for scale all, we're gonna type in 100% and type in enter. And now it will move everything back to uh, the original scale. So now if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look just like that, as you can see. And we can, you know, of course, further enhance this by creating like a, like a weird warp effect. So we can go into the effects. We're gonna add a fisheye right onto our clip. So just drag that on there. From here, we're gonna go to where we can see the actual you know, object. We're gonna click and drag this so it's centered about here. And we're gonna change the amount and move this to the left like so. So now it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna move the playhead at the beginning. I'm gonna add a keyframe next to amount and radius. I'm gonna go all the way to the end of that keyframe, go one frame to the left, go to amount and type in zero and press enter. And then this one you can type in zero and press enter as well. So now it's going to kind of go, uh, it's gonna shift back into its original uh, size and dimensions. So if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look just like that. And of course you can also add a prism effect. So go into blur, go to prism and drag a uh, prism blur on that. This is gonna be the first effect, right? The first transition. And then for the second clip, which is the fire clip, which is the most exciting one, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a selection, right? On your video, a different scene, of course, of where you want this effect to happen. Now, I suggest you guys film uh, your subject behind a, a sky that is all one solid color. I mean, it makes it a lot easier when we have to key them out. I'm gonna drag the fire footage above my media right here. And since this is like a slow motion clip, it's gonna take some time to 
build up. So I'm gonna press Command R to uh, bring up the retiming options. I'm gonna retime this and just drag this to the left to make it play a little faster. So I want it to play a little, you know, a little bit like that. And I don't want it to start right where it's kind of picking up about here like this. I want it to start where it's already kind of building up, which is here. So I'm just gonna move that to the left. Once you're here, I'm just going to trim this video and we don't really need the rest. So we're just gonna be look, uh, working with this clip here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, since it's like a black footage with the actual shot, we, so I'm gonna go down into the effects and we're gonna go down into King, which is gonna be about here. And I'm gonna drag the key onto our fire effect and that will just literally get rid of the whole entire black background. And you can go in and you know further enhance the uh, background here. So, can, so we're gonna drag this over to the right a little bit. Once we're here, what we can do is we're gonna go into the uh, color inspector tab and you can easily change the color of this because I think it's just like orange or yellow. I think it's a little bit boring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the uh, color properties here and adjust the master or the shadows. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the master first just to change the overall color. So I'm gonna make this blue or whatever color you think looks the best. So I'm gonna go about here and then we can change the shadows and don't worry about this right now. Uh, we can, you know, easily change that for you know, later, but I'm gonna move this over to here thing over here. And as you can see, we, we have kind of like this blue uh, kind of overlay effect and we don't want that. So we can, what we can do is just kind of push the shadows over to the right until we don't see that until it's, you know, completely gone like this. So once we're here, what we're going to do is we're gonna duplicate the bottom clip. So hold option and drag upwards, make sure that's above your fire clip. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into the effects, we're gonna go into King and we're gonna add a Lumic here. So add that onto your clip and we're gonna open up the Lumic here and we're gonna, from this point, what we want to do is pretty much have our subject behind the fire. So you're gonna have to play around with the Luma a little bit, but what I wanna do is I'll kinda wanna move it to the left like this, and you're gonna start noticing that it's disappearing from the road, which is what we want, and we wanna keep it on the black areas like this, okay? And you wanna kinda skim through the video to see you know, if it's actually working or not. And once we're here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another copy, so hold Option and drag upwards. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on the top clip, and we're gonna go into Effects, we're gonna go into Masks, Draw Mask, and drag that onto that clip, and leave that how it is, okay? Don't change the uh, position because that can mess it up. So draw mask is beneath the Lumic here. We're gonna select draw mask. And what we're gonna do is we're pretty much gonna make a selection of where uh, it's going, you know, it's overlapping on his face. So we don't want that. It's gonna start here. And I actually want it to start about here. And I'm gonna make a selection. But from here, all we have to do is just make a selection like that. A kind of like around his face. And you don't have to be really precise with this because we're just masking the areas of the fire that we don't want. And it's gonna look like this. And I'm gonna uncheck the Lumic here because we don't want that on this, inside of this mask that we just made. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move all of these points outwards to really, so that we don't see any of that inside of this. Now what you're gonna do without moving the uh, playhead, we're gonna go into the draw mask, and we're gonna add a keyframe next to control points and under transform, we're gonna add a keyframe next to position as well. And once we're here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press left on the arrow key to kind of move these if it moves. So here we can just kind of move this, push it a little bit to the left. Uh, I would focus on one area at a time. It's a little bit easier when it comes to creating the, the uh, making the effect look real. At this point, I'm just going over the areas. I'm just moving the mask to where I don't want the fire to be on. So here, over the car, I'm just moving these points over. Um, you might have to add a couple more points so that some of them stay on the subject and then some of these go over the car like this. That's why I added a couple more points. So something like this maybe. Okay, so if I go back, it's gonna look something like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to fit and we can play it through just to see how it looks like so far. Looks great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the draw mask and I'm gonna create a feather because if you look, there's some harsh edges on that. So if I click off of the mask, you're gonna see some points around maybe, that's actually a pretty good selection, but like right here, actually if I go back, you're gonna see there's this line right here. So we can fix by going to, by going into Feather and just making this, dragging this to the left a little bit. So you can see it now it's kind of disappearing a little bit. And if you go back and I push play, it's gonna look just like that. So super, super cool. And if we were to go back and we push play from the beginning, It's gonna look just like that. So super cool. Of course, this has to render through 
Uh, I'm going to do that really quickly here, but uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no plugins or anything like that that you really need. It's a very quick, simple uh, transition that you can easily do. If you're on a hurry, you can easily do this and, you know, make sure that your, ma your selection here with the draw mask, uh, you might have to go back in there if you're going to be working with the feather here. So just click on the draw mask and drag this out to the left a little bit more like that. Uh, just so it's not on his pants because uh, we are, you know, increasing the feather to the left. So it's pushing it inwards a little bit. So you might have to just move this out just like that, you know, nothing too major. And you can easily go back and change the color, if, you know, for whatever reason, just go into color board, click on this wheel, go to the color wheel here, and then just change the master to a different color like green or yellow. Of course, you might have to change these as well, but it's super cool and very easy to do. So if you guys found this video helpful whatsoever, please leave a like and uh, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a video like this. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Peace.